And we also have this, the red chili paste. Not so hot. I haven't tried that. Ooh, no, that one's hot. Hello. Welcome to Bhutan. Thank you, thank you. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing amazing. This is David Hoffman from David's Bin here in beautiful Bhutan in the Himalayas. I am so excited. I've been dreaming of coming here my entire life. I'm gonna be spending the next 10 days with my Bhutan, traveling throughout the entire country, and here I'm with my guy. Zambu. Zambu. Welcome to Bhutan. Awesome, and what's this? It's a welcoming scarf. In order to welcome someone to our beautiful country, the scarf, you can put it on. Uh, put it on? Yes. So super nice guys. And today what we're gonna do is we're actually driving. We landed in Paro International Airport, one of the most difficult airports in the world to land in. But right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go quickly to Paro to the town to get like a quick breakfast. And then we're gonna drive like two plus hours to another town. What's the name of the town? Punaka. Punaka? Punaka. Punaka. And then Punaka, we're gonna have lunch. Oh, I can't wait. Guys, I'm so excited. Let's go, let's go. I love the temperature too. It's like 45 degrees Fahrenheit. It's perfect. When the sun's out, it's really good. Sring Yutu. So Sring Yutu is our driver for the entire trip as well. So it's us three for 10 days. Yes. Oh man, I can't wait, man. I can't wait. <laughs> can't wait to see food, monasteries, hikes, festival. Yes. It's gonna be incredible. Today, we will be directly going to the fortress of Punaka. The festival is happening there. So we are going to witness some festival today. And this is Paro Town, as you can see, beautiful traditional buildings, lots of handicrafts everywhere, handicraft markets, and then we're going over here. What's your breakfast? Oh, momos. Momos, if you need, yes. And the tea, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you the traditional butter tea. I love this cafe. It's really nice. It's it's it's, it's like modern yet yeah. traditional. Yeah. It's you have these tables with this. Low couches, oh, it's great, dude. And in Bhutan, we have like different kinds of momo. We have non veg, so non veg it comprises of chicken, beef, pork, veg. We have cheese momo, we have potatoes momo. And one thing that he was telling me is that there's a lot of spice here, lots of chilies, and they also have chilies and cheese, yes. lots of cheese as well. It's like a yes. country that loves cheese, everything goes with cheese and they try to put some chilies in it. So it's called salted butter tea, suja. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's very buttery. Yeah. It's like, it's just like they melted an entire stick of butter and they salted it too. <laughs> Ooh, I mean, this is heavy, right? Yeah, <laughs> we have a different kind of tea leaf. Then we just boil the water and put the tea leaf. Once it's been boiled completely, we put butter, salt, and we churn it. So he's saying that people say it tastes like a soup. The reason why it tastes like a soup, or the comparison is because it's thick, very thick. Mm. And piping hot. Ooh, it's hot. So what do we have? Momo, we call it dumplings. And we have like two different kinds of dumplings here. One, it's chicken momo. And the other one, it's cheese momo. And here, the chili paste, or we call it the chili salsa. Okay, so which one's cheese, which one's chicken? The long one. The long yes. one? This is cheese. These are cheese right here? Yes. It's a processed cheese. Yes. It's gonna dip it into some of this. Here in Bhutan, mostly the cheese will be a cow cheese. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was good. Mmm. Another spice. Not too hot? Not too hot? Okay. Not too hot. It's a nice, like, almost creamy mm -hmm. chili paste. Mmm. And over here, we have the chicken. Usually, <clears throat> when they make the chili paste, they put the chili, onion, tomato, mm -hmm. everything, and they grind it and make it into a powder. And they put some oil or some water. I, I spoke too early. It is a little hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little hot. Mm. What a breakfast though. This is exactly what I want for breakfast every day. Dumplings, Bhutanese style, 
So momos are basically the Indo-Chinese version in India. Obviously dumplings in China. Here it's also dumplings. Yeah. So T's telling me that I should use my hands. So I use some hand sanitizer, wash my hands, and I'll grab some of this, get some of that heat. Mmm. No, it needs more, man. <laughs> like that. Mmm. Mmm. Spicy and delicious. <laughs> what a way to start my trip in Bhutan. Mmm. Incredible breakfast. We have a almost three hour drive, right? Yes. Three hour drive. I'm excited. This is how Bhutan is though. Bhutan's obviously in the mountains, so everything's like an hour to a five hour drive, and we're only staying on the western side of the country for these entire 10 days. Central and Eastern are a little more complex, a lot more roads, like a lot more winding roads, a lot more mountains. If you really wanted to see the entire country, I would say do at least three weeks, at least. Ready to go? Very good, my friend. Very good. Loved it. Woo! What a day. Beautiful day. And it's called Champang, Champaka Cafe. Thank you. So we came into the shop to buy a hat because the one I have on is way too hot. This is like for like blizzard weather. Hey, how you doing? Wow. That's it? That's awesome. All right guys, so let me try this on. So this is the flag of Bhutan in a beanie. It says Bhutan right here. I actually don't love that it says Bhutan, but I'll take it. <laughs> 350, right? <laughs> Look at the masks. Oh, these are the masks. Look yeah. at these. These are amazing. I'm gonna buy, how much is for this one? 8,500. 8,500? Yeah. New hat. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's better because the other one's way too hot. Way too hot. David, now we have three hours dry, but on the way, we are going to stop. We are going to see something. Let's hope that we have a very good weather today in order to see the Bhutan tallest mountain. That is called as Gunkar Pinsum. So the road's gonna be just like this for the next two and a half hours. Just a winding road crossing through the mountain. And over here to the right, we actually have the river of Paro and a lot of farmland. Over there, we have some like rice paddy fields. Yeah. I see some cow over there. The river here, it's called as Pachu. Pa means a shorter version for Paro, so we call it Pachu. And the river, it goes all the way down to India. And we have a paddy field here. And the rice, it takes 100 days to grow. And the rice grown in Bhutan are not the white rice. It is the red rice. And David, we are going to test the red rice later. So it, it's red rice, so is that, that's not basmati or jasmine, no, right? No. It's no. a different one. It's a different one, wow. And I, this is like epic. Look at this, look at the views. Whoa, man. The river, the heat, it's like 45 degrees outside, but if you close the car and you let the sun just cook you, you start <laughs> getting really hot. <laughs> the area is called Chuzom, which means the meeting of two rivers. The river coming from Thimpu and the river coming from Paro. So it meets here. So it meets right here, yeah. across the bridge, wow. I had to stop, guys, I had to, look at this. As we drive here on these winding roads along the mountain, you're always next to the river. You're always gonna get spots like this where you can just look over and admire this gorgeous land. Look at this, Bhutan, so amazing. This is why I came. Oh, woo! Chili and cheese? Buy it. What you want to eat? Eat? Yes. No, you tell me, man. Yeah. Hello. So you said this is cheese, right? Right, yeah, cheese. Soft mindu. You give a try. So this is dry yak cheese. Oh my god. It's so hard. 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 I've actually tried something like this in Uzbekistan. In a big ball. This is the Bhutanese chewing gum. And so you just you just chew for a while. The tea leaf, which is made for, which is used in order to make the butter tea. This is the one, the tea leaf. We have the roasted rice or the pulp rice. You take this with milk tea. We have a flattened corn. We have a rice ball, popcorn, dried apple, 
dried eggplant. And there's chilies over there. I can't chew this. <laughs> I think what has to happen is that it has to just like, your saliva just has to like soak into it like yeah. a sponge. Mmm, not so bad. Pretty good. And this is like a mini mini mart, right, on the street. Cool. Oh, and they have, they have booties. Booties right here. So I'm also gonna try another one, but this one's a little harder. Oh! Hi. I buy this too. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll take this one on the road. My friend, this cheese is too hard. <laughs> I'm, gonna break, I'm gonna break a cheese. <laughs> Very good. You said like, slowly try to bite, yeah. soak it, like yeah. let it soak up. The problem is that this one's really, really hard. Yeah. Like, it's hard to get through it. Yeah. And I'm nervous to like crack a tooth. So <laughs> bite it slowly. Mm -hmm. It tastes like cheese. Yeah. But super hard. Even I haven't like finished eating the dry yet. <laughs> <laughs> so of the mountains here, you said 70% of the land is trees. Yeah. The other 30 is like rocky mountains, right? And we do have like some flatter region like in Paro where we have the international airport and in Bumtang we have some flatter regions too and some areas we do have rocky mountains where it is really hard for the trees to grow right now we're going from Paro we're going east right yeah towards the east, towards the east. and this, this area I mean definitely way windier and higher than over there David we are here in Thimpu the booming city in Bhutan you could see like lots of construction going on and this is the only four lane double four lane expressway in Bhutan. So it is the only four lane expressway in Bhutan. Wow, and this is Timpu, so huge city. Yes, it is where 100,000 people are living. 100,000, so of the 700,000 people who live in Bhutan, 100,000 live here. In so Timpu, yes. this is the biggest city. Yes. Right, awesome. Incredible, and we're gonna be staying here the last two days. Yes, after right. Popjika. After Popjika. Cool, man. This is beautiful. Love the colors. And so all these buildings that we're seeing here along the highway, these are all like traditional style, right? It's a new style. This a is new, new style? style. Okay. But the shape of the window and the roofing style has to be there. That is the traditional one. The shape of the window, which is called a trifold shape, and the style of the roof. So these are the new kinds of buildings in Bhutan. Yeah, the reason I thought it was traditional is just the look of it yes. with the different paintings yes. of different, uh, I guess it's like animals, right? That's yes. the animals there? The four dignitaries. We have dragon, we have tiger, we have Garuda, the mythical bird, and we have snow lion, the four dignitaries, the four superior animals. So right now we're getting to what elevation? Is it 3,000? 150. 3,150? Meters. Meters high. Okay, so that's above sea level. Yeah. And up here it gets a lot colder and it's more and more windy. This is very different because we have trees to the right, super winding road. We're on the left side of the mountain now, not on the other side. And it's starting to rain. And what he's saying is that if we get to a certain level, it'll actually snow but obviously right now it's only 45 degrees so it's not that cold it's like something like seven uh, celsius right and what is that in bhutan you could see like five different colors of gray flags so each color it symbolizes something so the blue color it is for health and longevity white it is purification of karma karma means action red it's the wish fulfilling prayer Green, it's a compassionate prayer, and yellow, it's the victory over obstacles. So, in order to have all five, we people we try to like put all five colors of prayer flags together. And directly, you cannot put the prayer flags, though you can buy the prayer flags from the shop. Once, like you buy the prayer flags, in order to purify, we have to like take the prayer flags to a temple, and the monk from the temple will do the purification and again like we have to see the lunar calendar in order to see a good day and a bad day to put the prayer flag and right there my friends is snow my first sighting of snow in Bhutan <laughs> I get super happy when I see snow because I'm from Miami I never see snow oh never 
Okay, guys, so we're making a quick pick stop here at, uh, what is this? You said it's a 108 mountain stupas? 108 Bhutanese style of stupa. 108? Yes. They have like 180 numbers. And when is this date back to? It was built in 2004. So in 2003, our country had a problem with some of the Indian militants who have like started staying in Bhutan. So in 2003, our former king, K4, along with the but Bhutanese army, they were able to chase them away from Bhutan. So in order to celebrate the victory over chasing them away, the eldest queen mother, she built 108 Bhutanese style of super. This is, this is amazing. And the name it's called is Druk Ongel. Druk means Bhutan. Druk means dragon actually. Ongel means victory. Actually, on a very clear weather, you could see the Himalayan mountains, the ranges on that side. Oh yeah? So on a very clear day, you can see the Himalayan mountains over here to the left. Fortunately, right now, there's a huge fog coming in. Mist. It's a little wet over there. And this is it. When you make it here to the top, you have one huge stupa, and you have the 108. And each one has the Buddha, right? Yeah. In order to overcome the 108 defilements, we have like 108 volumes of prayer, 108 numbers of prayer flags and so on. So it is to overcome the 108 defilement inside our body. Okay. So 108 is like the lucky number in Buddhism, basically. You could say... Yeah. So, so like that. It's like the number that they always... Everything's for that. Yeah, I actually did a... In Korea, I stayed in a temple, a Buddhist temple, mm -hmm. and we had to do 108 bows. Oh! 108. We have like 108 exactly, exactly. All right, so we're done here. It's beautiful. It's 108 stupas. They're all basically exactly the same. They have some writing. They have the Buddha, you know, Buddha right there. And that's it. Now let's hit the road. We have a 20 minute drive for lunch. Whew. You'll notice that this road is uh, it's a little bumpier, a lot more potholes and lots and lots of snows. And what T's telling me is that what happens here is whenever there's snowfall, like heavy snowfall, the road will close for, you know, four plus hours before somebody can actually come out here and start cleaning it up. They put salt and the salt actually like messes up the street a little bit, right? We are going to a restaurant called Menchuna and we are going to have the traditional Bhutanese food. There will be chili, a lot of chili and cheese too. <laughs> Chili and cheese. <laughs> that is like Bhutanese food. Yeah. <laughs> that one was massive. Is there is there a reason why some are bigger and some are smaller or do they just keep adding on? They just keep adding on. They just keep adding on? Okay. I was gonna say, I mean it's huge. Yeah. But there's one here like every like every turn is one. Uh usually right? people they hang prayer flags on the area where they do get lots of wind. So the mountain the mountain side, the mountain area, the hilltop is the place where they get lots of wind so what we believed is when the wind blows the prayer written on a prayer flags will be blown by the wind and bless the people who passes by this area of bhutan is completely different from paro yeah completely different i mean this is like pure forest here it's like never-ending forest here it feels like you're in a jungle there were certain points there that you really you know it's different yes we're almost at the restaurant, right? Appetite. Almost Appetite. Well, <laughs> <laughs> hungry, guys. All we have is small moles. Come on. I made it here to restaurant Mechuna. Me Menchuna. Menchuna. Beautiful. Love it. Traditional <laughs> house. You have a stupa right in front. So, as soon as you walk in this restaurant, you can see it's a very traditional wooden restaurant. Over here to the left is like a souvenir shop. Over here to the right, dining hall and there's buffet. I'm actually getting stuff like a la carte, Bhutanese food, but this is buffet. What do you got here? You got some cabbage. We do have noodles here. You should try this one. Chicken what is that? And chili. Chicken chili? Yeah. They do have some beans. Mixed vegetable. This is spinach. Here is the four traditional dish that you're going to try. Dry fish with chili, dry pork with radish and chili, chili paste, squash with chili. So everything is chili. So this is my first Bhutanese food experience ever. This is like the real thing. So we got the dry fish, 
We have the pork. Here we have some chicken, which we just got from the buffet, but that's traditional Bhutanese style. And it has like some long beans, a little spicy. And over here we have, so this is like a different type of uh, vegetable. I've never seen it. It looks like cabbage. And it has some like, is that red chili? Or is that like, yeah, it's red chili. Whoa. And we also have this, the red chili paste. Not so hot. I haven't tried that. Ooh, no, that one's hot. I really love the setting of this restaurant. Wooden floors, wooden walls. They have a lot of different like uh, Bhutanese, I guess like not carpets, a tanka. So it's like Buddhist tanka. Yeah, it's an embroidery one. Embroidery, okay. And then over here we have some masks. And yeah guys, so I'm gonna start with the food. I think I'm gonna start with this. And this is actually squash. We looked it up, so it's squash. Wow. Hot, right? So you, just, you said just grab a little bit of everything, right? Yeah. Grab a little bit of everything, put it here on my plate. Oh, guys, this looks so good. The fish, you said I have to be really careful. There are spines. You guys know how much I hate that, but I'll be fine with this. <laughs> and then I'll get some of the, the chicken, right? Some of the chicken with a little bit of long beans right here. Dude, this food looks incredible. And you said it put just like non-stop, like just like drizzle. Fine. Fine? Okay. So I'm gonna dive in. I'm gonna first start off with the red rice with some of the chili. Mmm. Sugar and rice. Mmm. Spicy. Oh yeah. Yeah, spicy. Mm. Squash is too good. Mm. Mm. It's like spicy squash. And it's a little, it's like a little meaty. And a little thick. Oh, dude, the squash is unreal. Mm. I love the radish that came with the pork. So you got the radish, and then here you have nice chunky pork. Look at that. Oh man, fatty. It actually looks like bacon. The fries just fall apart, and then it has a nice layer on top. A little crunchy, a little crispy, very dense. Mmm, with the radish, and a little spicy. Well, I think I put a lot of spice, so spice all over everything. Mmm, man, that pork fat. Look at that. More of it here. Yes, a nice top layer. It's very thick. Mmm. That is like delicious pork. It actually reminds me of some pork dishes that I had down in Megalaya. Mmm. And the fish, you said to be careful, right? Yeah. Let's go in from the top. Mm-hmm. Mmm. So it's dry fish. Mmm. Yep. And the bones left and right here. I need to get rid of these bones. <laughs> Too many bones. But I like the fish. It's different. Oh, I actually love mixing the spice with the long beans. Whoa. Wow. Yeah, be careful with the chilies. These chilies are crazy hot right now. Ooh, my mouth is taming. Now I'm gonna jump on the chicken. Chicken with a tiny bit of bones. Mmm. Fish, you definitely have to have some spice. Just, it's not hot. Light sauce. It says curry, but it's a super light curry. If you like spicy food, ooh, this is like spicy, man. Mm -hmm. I think my favorite thing has to be the squash. This is what I like the most. So I'm just gonna have the rest of it. It's so good, guys. Tons of squash. Look at that. It's a big portion, huh? Yeah, so having the squash, a little bit of spice. Oh man. It's good. Mmm. It's, it's like almost like a like a lazy like stir fry. Mmm. Look at the oil coming down this fish. It's a nice small fish. You can see the bones right here. Tons of bones. So what you have to do, if you want, you can just break it up. 
pulled out. The main thing is you don't want to get a spine. The spine is the worst part. Go around the spine. Get out the flush. Mm-hmm. It's it's so different. I never had fish like this. With dried fish with oil. Mmm. A lot. And right here, I just gonna pull it off. Oh, there it is. Pulled it off completely. We get the rest of this pork. Look at the oils. Nice radish. Look at these pieces of pork. In the fish, there's this awesome, awesome veg. All oily. Ooh, I think I overdid it with the chilies. Mm. So squash, pork, chilies, some radish, all together. I just love the flavors. I love the heat. All right guys, so I'm gonna try something really, really special. It's called Samji. It's only made during special occasions and because the festival is going on, they made it. It's basically like a VIP dish. And so it's rice, the coriander, egg, and chilies. And then next to it we have uh, the butter, butter tea. Butter tea, not buttermilk, butter tea. So I eat and then I drink. Like that, okay. So this is just some rice. Mm-hmm. Mm. Not so hot. It's almost like a fried rice. Yeah. Mmm. It's very similar. And then drink? Yeah. is hotter. Butter tea. It's like, for me, this is like just pure butter. Wait, like, it just tastes like pure butter. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go a little wild, throw some chilies, and then mix it. That's what you have to do. I think it's gonna give it the most flavor, right? Yeah. Flavor, heat. Because before it wasn't so, I mean, yeah, it's it's basically white rice with a tiny bit of chili, tiny bit of coriander. You have chunks of the egg, right? Thank you, mom. And you basically have the butter tea to like calm down the heat, right? Yeah. I don't need it. I play it like this. Mm. My friend, congratulations, this is awesome. Mmm. We had such an awesome day. We, it's been a long one. Uh, just uh, I traveled yesterday to get here, so I've been out for like 40 something hours already going around. But yeah, so we started off with some delicious momos and some buttermilk over in Padrón. And we drove three hours, stopped at a few different places, and we made it here to lunch. And we had an epic Bhutanese, traditional Bhutanese lunch. I mean, food is stellar. If you love this video, please give me a thumbs up. Let me comment below. Subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure. Where? My guitar. <laughs>